What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mode, and um, let's wrap up this giant monster of a project, shall we? So we've got our carriage here, our wagon. We've got the cannon. Um, I know we haven't done the stripes on the saber tusk yet. I'm just gonna leave it for now, just because I don't think I have time today to do it, and I want to get this done. So um, we might come back to it later, but for now we'll just leave it as is. We've got the two. Oh man, doesn't that look great? I mean. Not saying that like I'm, you know, a good, a good painter or like really that great, but I mean just using simple techniques, you get a really effective, um, I guess, finish. The creamy tusk, creamy color on the tusks, I think, just looks really fantastic next to the um, the old dark iron and um, just all the different colors work really, really well. You've got your driver here, and then you've got your Rhinox, the jaw piece for the, the cannon, little knobby driver, and um, the bits and pieces that go on the wagon. These two wagon wheels, the two barrels, and the imperial treasure chest. So let's um, start by doing putting together the wagon. We're going to cover the two. Oh, this beautiful Chaos Star, and um, the other side we're going to use our two wheels, and I'm going to be using liquid cement for plastic models by Model Master. Oh, I'm so excited that we're putting it all together. This was such a fun little project. <laughs> I think every Ogre Army should have, uh, you know, an iron blaster in their army, and even if you don't collect ogres, the, um, just the model itself is so much fun to paint. You'll notice that there are two different ways of putting on these wheels. You've got a pretty rectangle kind of uh, hole for inserting the peg in, and then you've got this other one that looks more like a, I don't know, like a sun, sunrise or something. So. And that's good that they did that to show you where which side each one goes on. I'm trying to glue wherever you think the pieces would connect, and then just slide it in. It's very, very Flintstones. Oh, goodbye, Chaos Star. You're so much fun to paint. Yeah, whoever designed this model must have just... I don't know. See, you, you can't see, you cannot tell at all that there's a there's an awesome Chaos Star under there, so that's that's too bad. You and I, we both know that it exists, though. Don't we, YouTube? We know. We know the truth. Okay, next we're going to glue our driver in. Oh, I guess the keyhole serves a purpose when I was looking at the model. He actually has a little indentation for, you know, where you're supposed to glue him. And um, that's cool, but I don't think they needed to get my hopes up by designing such an awesome piece as that keyhole if we were never meant to paint it. I just seems kind of silly to me, but whatever, whatever GW. Pressing him on. Okay, and in the back, I believe, Looking at the, um, the box and uh, the pictures online at the Games Workshop website, looks like this piece, the Imperial Treasure Chest, goes into these four little pegs or holes down here. So I'll just glue where the contact points I think are going to be. There. And, oh no! dropped it Imperial Griffin side down. I'm actually going to insert 
the chest um, so that the griffin is facing the back because I think you'll be able to see it better. Than if the griffin was facing front, you know what I mean? So that is there, like that. Oh, it's so exciting! Um, why don't we do this hangy, hangy piece next? So this one kind of attaches like right over here, I believe, on the side. It's supposed to look like it's lashed to the wagon. Um, so why don't we glue it like right over there. cement, get a little bond, chemical bond, covalent bond, app chemistry, Take our Nordlin, Nordlin beer, and put the glue on the bottom rim. And slap that baby on. Our wagon. Actually, that's not our complete wagon. We're gonna put our little driver guy here in the front. So, he's got a nice little flat tushy that we're gonna put some glue on. <coughs> then, put it right at the front. Okay, so there is our completed wagon. We're gonna come back in just a little bit. I'm gonna let it dry for a minute and then <coughs> and then we will attach the side tusk thingies and the rhinox and the cannon all together. Okay, so we'll see how this section goes. Hopefully it'll be okay. I've put the cannon in place and um, we are going to glue in <laughs> one side of these uh, the uh, tusk thingies, side horn tusk thingies. So the contact points are going to be the um, slot here in the in the wagon, the uh, little hole over here. And I believe that is it, because it also connects to the Rhinox, which we have not put 
in yet, so I'm going to carefully slot this baby into the side and up into the cannon. Sorry if it goes out of frame. Oh, here we go. We have contact. And not the Jodie Foster movie. Get in there. All the way in, please. Fantastic. Might need to have some uh, green stuff cover the seams over there, but other than that, that looks pretty good, right? So now we're gonna slot our little Rhinox in by attaching glue to this connector piece here in the harness. And then inserting it into the tusk thingy. Boom! At this point we want to attach it to its base so that the Rhinox doesn't dry at a different kind of angle. So we're gonna put glue on the three legs that, uh, feet that have ground contact as well as a line across both wagon wheels at the back. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. It's almost done. We just stick them down. Now that's drying, we get our other. Ah! Oh, you. No! No, stand in your home. You'll stand in your home. Stay. Stay. Yeah. We're gonna push the or uh, glue the other side in. Three contact points is very good, I think. I'm gonna get them all at the same time. Okay, so what happened? Um, I, I glued the tusk in, I didn't realize that I hadn't deleted all the clips before, so the video ran out like way before I had intended it to. So basically though, I, I glued in the tusk, then I glued the three Rhinox's feet with super glue because it's touching gravel, not uh, plastic, as well as the two wheels in the back. I did little thin lines across each wheel, and then I glued the little guy to its base. So you can kind of see where the contact points are. I, um, I wanted to do it all at the same time right after gluing this Tuscan that you saw off of the last video just because I didn't want it to dry, um, I don't want the glue to dry while the Rhinox might have been in a weird position because he's only held by these two little rods on either side of the tusks so he could have been you know swinging at a weird angle forward or back too much and not been, been able to align with the, with the base once, it was, um, once the glue was dry. So we're going to let that dry and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to attach this giant gob <clears throat> to the top. So, I'm gonna push in the tusk a little bit more. Oh, don't snap, don't break. Yeah, that was so sad because as soon as I got the thing on the base and I was like so happy, I started singing, you got the touch, boom, 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 boom. And I didn't even realize it wasn't filming anymore. I felt like a total Total Dorcas. You got the power! Yeah! I think this is also to hide the fact that um, the mold lines just on the models are just really bad. 
Um, so it's supposed to be like hanging over a little bit, like it's about to close. But there you go, the verdigris effect looks really good on it. Um, it covers up the mold lines on the bandages that are wrapped around the tusks right over there. And here's a completed model. Let's look at it and be amazed at how it turned out because I spent so much time filming this thing. Um, I hope you enjoyed the journey. <coughs> if anything, I have to still paint the stripes on the saber tusk, but you know what, at this point, I'm just happy to get it done. I knew I wouldn't have that much time today, so I wanted to knock out this video. Um, and you know have a rewarding end to my spring break that I got all of this done. Um, sub assemblies definitely easier to paint everything when you have it in sub assemblies and um, even like the barrels and the uh, the treasure chest on the back if I didn't take the time to, to paint them separately then I, they might have turned out differently. Oops, let's get that guy back up. It's supposed to be. The wheels um, little hangman's noose on the side. Uh, so much of this model is dependent on you getting in and working the details. Like the sculptor was just, you know, I'm gonna put so much detail into this model that you have to paint it a certain way. I'm glad he did, but oh boy, it's, um, you know, it really is a challenge, but it's a lot of fun. And hey, you get a Rhinox. Rhinox are cool, even if it's a little baby Rhinox. I don't care. Um, I'm just glad that Ogre Kingdoms has it. <laughs> it's somewhere represented in their army and you don't have to go to Forge World. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, leave a comment below. Tell me what you thought of the video. Um, don't forget to hit the like button. Tell me if you're painting your own Iron Blaster. I'd love to hear feedback from you. What did you find hard, challenging, fun, easy? Um, anything just get me I'd, I'd love to hear feedback from other ogre kingdoms players out there I'm gonna try and put all these videos up on ogrestronghold.com in my knob blog uh, I haven't been there in a while just because I've been um, doing other stuff like you know vampire counts and whatnot but uh, this iron blaster definitely worthy of some knob logging if anything I'm gonna add a little bit of grass to the base uh, I didn't want to add it before I glued the guy on just because um, I didn't know where he'd go but now now that it's done um, I'm going to head back over to ogrestronghold.com and um, put this guy up. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next video.